explore Steve. Yeah. How's it going, people? Because of your great response to the first video of the unique and unusual tools that I own, I came back and now I'm going to do another one. I'm going to give you a first a little demonstration on how that Panto engraver works, and I'll show you a couple more tools that I have laying around that you might be interested in and seeing a little bit of show and tell. First, let's start out with a demonstration of the Priest Panto engraver in the diamond drag configuration and using it this way you can make like trophy plaques and use these as your example these are the letters or the fonts is what they call them you place that on the top platen and you spell out whatever you want to engrave on like a trophy plaque or a pen or a goblet or whatever you're going to engrave here I've set it up with Explore Steve January 2015. That's when I started out my channel. Anyway, I needed something to engrave on, so I took a drive down to a local trophy shop. It was in my area. And for the price of free, I came away with a couple of engraving blanks in royal blue. I have fixed the blank on the table there with just some double-sided sticky tape and I started the process of tracing the letters on the top platen while it's transferred to the bottom platen. I have to be careful to lift up the diamond drag between each letter so I don't make a scratch mark from one letter to the next. And this is kind of a slow process compared to today's computer numerically controlled or CNC type of engravers that can whip stuff out like this about as fast as you can type and hit the print button. But it's kind of fun. It uh, kind of relaxes me to do little tedious stuff like this, you know, where you don't have to get your hands dirty. I just go from one letter to the next till I come away with a plate like this. That's how it works. Like I said in my previous video, I got interested in engraving by going to a gun engraving show. And although I'm not interested in engraving guns, I do like to do things like this. These are just a couple of practice plates. And uh, that's a tiger and a dragon. And on the right is a samurai sword guy with the word samurai on there. And to do things like this, you really need to go freehand. And use like a regular hand graver in the traditional push graving method where you just hold it in your hand and push it along or you can use a hammer and a chisel where you hold a hammer in one hand, a chisel in the other and kind of chisel, chisel your way around. There's a SpongeBob there and that's what the hand graver looks like. Even though this is sharpened expertly with some jigs that I have for sharpening, it still takes quite a bit of skill and you have to practice like every day. You got to like do this for a job to be good at engraving by hand like this. So I don't use this tool. I use a pneumatic engraver and it's made and invented by a man named Steve Lindsay who uh, makes these in small batches in his shop. He's a great creative mind and he holds quite a few patents from his inventions. And before he ships it out he'll engrave by hand his name and the name of the product the air graver. So he has enough faith in it and it is a work of art. This is absolutely beautiful made out of the stainless steel, expertly machined and it feels great in the hand. I love it. To use this I hook it up to my virtually silent air compressor. Here's what it sounds like. I just switch it on and you can hear it start to idle. So this is deemed or this is called the palm control because the power depends on how hard you push the tool in the palm of your hand. 
and as you heard, you know, the harder you push, uh, the more impacts and the harder the impacts per minute. And as you can see, I do this work under a microscope. Another unique and unusual tool that I own is called the Tag Micro Lathe. This is about the size of a jeweler's lathe and it's very well made. It's made in America also, like the rest of these tools, in Arizona, I believe. Now they do make accessories for this to where you can use it for wood and you can turn small items like pens and things like that or handles. But I use it for metal. And just like a wood lathe, you know, you use this tool up top put it between centers and you use this to turn down the diameter of whatever you're milling aluminum steel copper brass and you can make small parts for like models that you might make like shafts or pins or whatever you might need it also comes with these quick change tool holders well it didn't come with it this was an accessory that I purchased from a company called A to Z who makes these especially for this lathe and it fits on other small lathes. So this is a cutoff tool. I have a right, left turning tool, a facing tool. And putting them in is as easy as sliding them on and locking it down. Now I have larger, more capable machines in workshop number two and those can be used for threading and doing larger parts up to about nine inches in diameter but this one works for in the house and i found it good for bonding with your kids for example i made these small tops with my son when he was small and he still keeps them in a place of honor in his room so that's the video if you liked it go ahead and hit the thumbs up and wait did I tell you that these seats spin around? Well, they do, so now you know. Anyway, subscribe. That way you can get notifications of future videos. And as always, ask questions in the comments section, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks, people, and have a great day.